have it manifests so we have ideas that people are familiar with we have a name and the recognition that people understand can stand for them any day like i said earlier i i was a presidential candidate that ended the election in 2019 and didn't stop there. I, I never stopped campaigning. That's, and you mentioned that. I participated in every struggle since 2019, since the last election. Of course, I particip participated in pretty much every struggle in this country in the last 30 years. Are you one of those people who do believe in endorsements from former presidents or past leaders or statesmen or influencers, people who can influence their councils and areas or regions? Do you think you need the support of these people to gain more, gain new voters base, gain new believers of the AAC party, or you think it's something you can do on your own? No, we believe in the endorsement of the people, because honestly, Nigeria has been overrating some of the so-called elder statesmen. That's one. But on a principled level, I cannot imagine myself going back to the same characters that ruined this country, that put us in the situation that we're in now, to say, oh, come and endorse me. Are you going to endorse me as a brand that will go back and continue your style of leadership? Definitely not. And most of them have only one vote. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. So if you go to the people, you are bypassing a whole lot of these overrated so-called elder statesmen. They don't have any constituency in reality mm. because their constituency is not the poor because they are the ones who created the poverty in the first place. Their constituency is not the oppressed because they are the oppressors. Their constituency is a constituency of the people who are holding this country to ransom and who see Nigeria as a property that they own. And I reject that and I've always rejected that. It's okay, you cannot ask me, for instance, uh, to go back and seek the endorsement of Babangida who I was one of the people that drove out of power in 1993. Like, how would I? It doesn't make sense. You know, I was more powerful than him in 1993. Why would I go to him and beg for his endorsement in 2023, 30 years after we chased him out of power? It doesn't make sense. It's like you're you know, engaging in reverse gear. I'm not going to be a leader that will be genuflecting on the altars of falling gods. Do you see yourself? in any way approving of any of the personalities so far that have made their intention known to be presidents? Are you in support of any of them? Do you approve of any of them? Or do you believe that you're not absolutely, you're absolutely the best candidate for the job? Yes, I believe I'm the best candidate for the job. And I've spoken extensively about a lot of them. I've, you know, when you're campaigning, you're talking about your ideas, your manifesto, and what you're capable of doing. And you're also warning the public of records and pedigrees of your opponents. So I don't have any reason, therefore, to say, oh, you know, I believe in something. I, I might believe in the person, you know, because this is not war. If I go outside and we meet, we shake hands. Uh, it's just as we argue sometimes, uh, I'm sure you've seen some of my videos challenging some of the candidates, whether you're a presidential candidate or you are a deputy mm -hmm. or vice. If I see you doing what is wrong, I will say it publicly. Do you think the personality and the party that it represents are one of the same, or do you think you can distinguish a personality from a party? I say that to ask you a question. Should you win the elections, would you be working with people from other political parties that you're currently opposing, or do you write them off as one of the same? No, if, uh, you know, the moment we win the election, everybody will be coming as representative of their own constituencies. We must work with them. We must find a way around, you know, uh, a balance. Uh, but what we will not do is to work with them against the people. If Nigeria is due for a change, yes. do you think Nigerians are ready to make that change in the 2023 February 25th elections? Yes, I believe that Nigerians are always ready for a change because they are the ones calling for a change all the time. And you think they are ready to be demonstrable about that change by... Well, you know, this is why we engage in a different kind of campaigning. It's not only to say, it's not only to listen to you say we want change. 
It's also turn them into change agents. That you must demonstrate that you want this change you want. And the best way to do it peacefully and democratically is to vote for the right kind of persons so that you don't come back six months after election that, oh, we need another kind of change because it's not what we voted for. Schools are closed for nine months at a time. I'm talking about higher institutions. And, and this happened also in the midst of uh, you know, a global tragedy uh, of uh, immense proportion that was uh, COVID. So, um, so we, we don't really know, we're not going to know how bad things are until the regime is gone. Uh, nobody knows when, when the election until the election is over. Um, so I've heard so many of these comments. You know, their assumption is that you know, some candidate will win the election. Every candidate in this election is a potential winner of the election. Indeed. But and every supporter is also a pro potential prophet of the winner of the election. So you hear a lot of prophecies. In fact, there were people who prophesied that Argentina will, uh, will lose the World Cup. After they won, they are still prophesying. You know, they go back to church next time and said, well, if they had fielded one candidate, or if Argentina has collapsed the structure for Brazil, Brazil would have won. Does it make sense? Mm. Because they are in a comp competition. So I'm in mean, competition against your candidate. You asked me to collapse my structure. I don't want to be a religious leader. Otherwise, I would have started a church instead of a political party. Mm -hmm. You get my point? Yeah. Uh, so, and it has become very well known that politicians are creative liars. You understand? Know? That's why I don't want to be called a politician. I hate that uh, nomenclature. If you don't have good intentions, it doesn't matter how much, how long you pretend. I don't want to be a pretender. I don't want to pretend that churches are going to become my only constituents. Because I'm for the entire country. Those who go to church, mosque, and those who don't go anywhere, and those who go to other places, they are all citizens of Nigeria, and we should treat them equally. So, if, for instance, I go to the church on Sunday, and they clap for me, and they pray for me, and they put their hands and shake my brain until they shift to one side in prayers, you know, what am I going to do? What do you think the churches would think if I go to Kija Shrine? Because, ah, this man is an idolatry, you know, he's, he, he, he worships it's everywhere. Idol. Meanwhile, those guys in the more, in those shrines might be better than some pastors, you know. I'm not criticizing religion, but I just, I did it in, you know, I went to a number of churches, but one of the issues I had in 2019, of course, which I revealed to this, a lot of the churches had, pastors had a problem with the fact that I refused to kneel down and put their hand on my head. And I asked one of them, can I put my hand on your head before your congregation? He said no. So why would you be putting your hand on my head? Is it that God doesn't understand you until you shake my head? But those things are not necessary. So I am just saying, listen, there are good people out there, good pastors, bad pastors, good Muslims, bad Muslims, or Afars, or whatever they are. But the presidency of the country is not about those people. It's about everybody, including them. I have published on a monthly basis an accounting of breakdown of all the money I raised. Where? And it's on t t today I just put on one on Twitter. You can go to my page. But they will see it, they will ignore it. They will ignore it. And then, but Peter B is also raising money. Have you seen an accounting of one single day or month? It's raising money the same way. In fact, I started crowdfunding. They borrow the idea, but they don't do what I do with my own crowdfunding, which is to explain, because this is the way to run as leaders. Transparency is key. Part of what is killing Nigeria is that our leaders hate to be transparent. And some of them are not transparent because they are afraid of criticism, of you know, scrutiny of their transparency. And I don't belong in that category. So there are ways uh, by which people are raised. Circumstances like Nigeria has found itself creates its own resistant fighters too and i'm just privileged and i must say this with humility that i find myself in the leadership of a resistance movement or i have found myself in this movement over the years and having not been tainted so you better vote for the right person now so that you can live long because some of these guys when they if they win in 2023 as you are going to vote for them you will, you may not, I'm, I'm sorry to say, things may not all go well enough for you to vote in 2027. You can ask people who promoted Buhari 
or who voted for him in 20, 20, 2015, you know. Some of them did not make it to, to, to this day, uh, including some of his influential cabinet members uh, or kitchen cabinet members. They all died along the way because of the circumstances that they created. Some of them, the chief of staff, for instance, died of COVID because why? when COVID first started and everybody was saying, lock your borders, he was traveling around the world, holding meetings, and I forgot that not taking care of Nigeria's border will lead to his own death. When you have a chance to appoint an incompetent person, so you go and appoint the incompetent, and you start shouting why you don't have roads and you don't have water. You are supposed to elect a clean man. You go and elect the dirtiest man that you know. You even admit that he's a lesser thief, you know? It's a thief, not a thief anyway. Mm -hmm. You know, all that is just, let's just manage him, you know. And when you get halfway to the thing, you start shouting, where is Shure? You know, where is Wale Shoyinka? Where is Shure? Exactly. You know, you start insulting our generation. People are still insulting Shoyinka, and he's 89 years old. Shoyinka held the radio station to ransom with a gun at the age of 20 something. You still want him to come and fight for you in 2023. Yes. People are always particular about track records, what you've done in the past. You see yeah, not, I don't think people are particular about track If anybody's particular about right, track records, how can you be so supporting? What is wrong? What is, what is wrong with Tinubu? What is, what is his track record? He was governor of Lagos State, you know, for eight years. Look at Lagos now. It's the most ghettoized neighborhood in the world. The records are there. That's record. That's track record. What about Atik, who was vice president of this country for eight years? When they had, when ASU had problems, what did they do? They went and awarded themselves, and they, you know, licenses to build universities and abandoned the public universities. Was it not during their period that they were spending money to buy vehicles for, for their concubines instead of giving scholarship to students? I know that Tinubu is not competent. I followed Tinubu's, you know, uh, studied him. The, the so-called, uh, I mean, the not so-called, but the, the drug history that was dug out recently I used to speak on his uh, character. I was the first to obtain it in 2008 from Chicago and published it on Sahara Reporter. So, so I know that. I know what's contained there. I know what he was doing before he came to Lagos. So, to, I know what they were doing in exile. So, so how can I say that such a person is competent to rule Nigeria with such a tainted record of drug addiction, drug involvement and there's no question. That's why he can't he doesn't want to the debate. He can't go out and debate. So at last last uh, everybody will get in breakfast, you know, permission to speak uh, uh, broken English. So we'll get our breakfast but mine is to keep telling telling you what is true, tell you what I stand for and what I'm about and the need to share with you my vision for the country and that I have been I have a mission to make this country work and put liberty on the ballot and fix our country once and for all. Because you know till the other side, our opponents, they always make it look difficult to fix Nigeria. That's why so many of them can speak to only a few things. I can speak about everything.